to a Super Home 59 video about loft insulation and today I'm on a chair and this is our loft hatch. Now the first thing that strikes you about our loft hatch is the very thick wedge, wedge of polystyrene, and it is polystyrene, that is on the back of the door. The door itself is a hard plastic and around the edge, if you can look very closely, there's a seal that seals up very closely against the rim of the door itself, of the actual hatch in the ceiling. Now that will seal completely like that. Now that's a tremendous improvement from where we were a few years ago. The original loft hatch for a house in the 1980s would have been about a three or four millimeter piece of plyboard and it wouldn't have fit around the edges at all. In fact, you could have seen daylight through it. That's how bad it was. Now keeping in mind the various home improvements we've made to the loft insulation, including the boarding and storage as you'll see in a minute, we actually have relatively easy access to the loft. I need to only pull down the ladder and extend it to the floor for access. So here we are in the attic. You can see it's full of junk. Like many homes, attics are full of junk. But this one's just a little bit special. I should point your attention now to the hatch area where I'm standing and you can see this exposed insulation here and I can touch this quite freely because this is sheep wool insulation. Now that level where my hand is is the original ceiling joists okay so that's the load bearing structure of the house okay so above it you see a secondary joist here okay now that's running at right angles to the original load bearing joists. It is not load bearing other than the fact it's holding up this floor inside the attic, okay? So on top of that, you see another one. We laid it crisscross like this, running across the joists in 90 degrees, and then another layer across the new joists at 90 degrees as well. So that gave us lattice. Now, of course, you just can't lay pieces of wood across your attic and expect it to be very stable. Of course, as we floored on top of it, it would just fall over. So everything has to be bolted down. So how do we do that? Well, in the same department of wicks, we bought roofing brackets. They are steel, like this. Relatively cheap to buy. We bought a bucket full of them. And what they do is when you fix the first layer of wood, like here, across the joisting, you basically fixed the two together like that. Drill two holes in there, two holes in there, drill and um, screw some um, screws into there. Just for information, according to the information sheet on this, this is a 47 millimeter times 100 millimeter joist. It is 2.4 meters long. Of course, we do. The secondary way it's been secured is to the A-frame. This is the A-frame in the attic of most um, non-flat roofs like this. And here's another A-frame behind me. And if you look closely here, there's another fixing bracket. It's much like these sort of things, but it's not L-shaped. It's just basically long and flat. And so we have aligned up the over joisting with the A-frame and basically put three holes and three screws there, three holes and three screws along there. So that makes it very rigid. It's very much attached to the A-frame and to the original joists in the attic. So whilst we were fixing the new joists, we laid the insulation between the joists. It comes as most of this um, rolled insulation is in a big roll in plastic bags. We simply laid the joists, secured them, the brackets, and then rolled out the insulation between them. We did the first layer of the sandwich, and then we applied the new joisting on top of that, and then applied the second layer. The original layer of insulation, we look very closely, actually is still there. And that's mineral wool insulation. That's the stuff that often makes your skin itch, the yellow stuff. 
So what we have now are two layers, and these are meant to be about 100 millimeter thick layers of the insulation, two layers of that on top of mineral wall. So that's 300 millimeters of insulation in total. Okay. You can see also we've applied overboarding, which gives us a good solid load bearing top, flat top for us to do perform storage on. And we have lots of storage on here. Now I make this insulation sound relatively simple. In fact, it took three months to do this job. This space here is a five meter times eight meter space. Okay, so we have here what? 40 square meters and of course we did everything twice because there's two layers of insulation. Um, even more complicated than that we also had to seal in the lights in the ceiling above. There are inset lights here and this box here, you just about see it, is um, boxing in in the attic space those inset lights in the ceiling. Basically, it makes it airtight because all that's happening was all the hot air from downstairs was escaping into the attic around the light fittings. There was nothing to seal them in. So we did basic DIY. Again, went to a local retailer, um, a building merchant, bought these sections of wood, chopped them up and then applied them with basic PVA wood glue and managed to seal them with a basic piece of... Um, this is kind of furniture board on top with a small slot cut for the wiring. This raises it above the level of the joist and above the level of the rear of the electronics of the lighting system. So it's all self-contained inside there. And this is a screw down. So if we want to maintain the lights, change the wiring, we can just lift this top off here and it can all be changed. All the flooring here is just screwed down so everything can be lifted up for maintenance purposes. Another thing to mention here is pipe work. All the pipe work here has been thoroughly insulated. When we moved in in 2008, there was no pipe insulation anywhere in the attic. This run of pipe my hand is on now goes basically from the shower pumps behind me all the way down to a bedroom that's over the garage to a bathroom that's in that area to pump the water down there. Okay, so it's a very long run of pipe with no insulation whatsoever. Now we have a funny story about fitting insulation. When we first came here, I fitted the insulation and the piping behind me just snapped in half. It was plastic. It had actually been um, applied with plastic push fit fittings and someone at some point had fitted them onto copper piping and then they'd used a blow torch on the piping. This made the piping very hot. This made the plastic very weak. So as soon as I did maintenance, it just snapped. There was water everywhere, it was a near disaster. I don't look forward to telling you the story again. It was not enjoyable. I had to call an emergency plumber and at an enormous expense, we managed to isolate the water, switch it off. We managed to save the attic, the attic of the ceiling below um, because thankfully there was plastic boxes in the attic and I managed to catch the water that was leaking in a plastic box long enough for the emergency plumber, plumber to come out and rescue us. It was not a happy sight. Thankfully, we dried the attic out. We had to get rid of some of the insulation that was soaked um, and we we're going to replace most of it anyway, so that's fine. So be aware in old houses with DIY plumbing that you don't break it. We have now successfully replaced all the plumbing. And if you look just behind me here, we have quite solid flexi piping now fitted. And that is bulletproof. I could probably kick it. It wouldn't break. So what we have here is the hot water tank. Well, it's just a header tank for the... Um, the water that we use for washing and showers and baths okay there would have been a header tank here for the heating system but that's now gone because actually we have a pressurized system and that's pressurized via these valves that you see behind me here relatively maintenance free i don't really have to do anything with that as you can see the tank here is well insulated when we arrived here in 2008 there was no insulation on this tank whatsoever it wasn't even a lid and there was stuff floating in it it wasn't very nice so we put a lid on we insulated all the way around and that can be quite important when you well insulate a loft space like this it's going to be more exposed to the ambient temperature outside the house if it's freezing out there it could be freezing in here so one of the things you have to do and it's a recommendation is you don't put too much insulation down here and i'll show you what i mean so down here right remove that 
use a spare insulation. There's actually much less insulation down here. So a little bit of heat will trickle up here to try and stop the water pipes from freezing. Another important thing if you're going to do any work in an attic is to make sure you fit some lighting. This is not the original lighting of the attic. In fact, this attic had no original lighting system. I had to install all this myself. If you're not confident with that sort of work, then do get an electrician to fit it. It's relatively simple to do yourself. I just use an extension cable uh, around the attic and I actually run that cable through a hole in the ceiling down into where the domestic water hole water cylinder is in the airing cupboard and then I plug it into a main socket down there. Relatively simple DIY task to do. There's one, two, three, four light bulbs in here, more than enough for an average size attic, but good light is very important. When we came here in 2008, the only thing I found in here was a basic lamp that was stood right here. It had nothing in it, no light bulb. It was actually a while later that I found the light bulb had exploded and was lying with broken glass all over the top of the insulation. It was a bit of a nightmare. One aspect worth pointing out to you is the fact that we have labelled on top of the flooring itself the location of all the wiring and all of the light fittings, including down to where the screws are, okay? And they're all written up as exactly what they are. So any time maintenance is required, um, an electrician can come up here and they can have a look around and they can see exactly how everything is laid out. That includes any piping. I don't think there is much piping here other than down to the domestic hot water cylinder, but even that's labelled up. This has been a Super Home 59 video all about attic insulation, loft insulation, and the sort of DIY tasks you need to get done up there in an old 1980s house. My name is Mark Brown. You can come and visit this house anytime you like. Just go to www.superhomes.org.uk forward slash 59 and we look forward to meeting you and you too can conquer your house.